Well, here's a story that uh, is dark as dark can be. I, I've only seen the headline so far. I haven't gotten to, to the specifics, but the headline tells a disturbing story here. This is in the Washington Post. Man died after being eaten alive by bugs in filthy jail cell, family says. LaShawn Thompson was slumped over in a cell at the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta when a detention officer came to check on him in September. The cell was so dirty that a worker who entered it wore a safety suit designed to protect from hazardous materials, according to jail records. Jesus Christ. That's wild. Officers were unable to resuscitate Thompson in the cell, where he'd been held for around three months. An autopsy could not determine his cause of death, but the report described an extremely severe infestation of small insects across Thompson's body. His face, upper and lower extremities were pockmarked with cuts and lesions from repeated skin picking, the report said. But to Thompson's family, the cause of death is clear. Thompson was eaten alive by insects and bedbugs, Michael Harper, an attorney for Thompson's family, said in a news release Wednesday. The release, accompanied by jail records and graphic photos of Thompson and his cell, called for a criminal investigation into the 35-year-old man's death and for the Fulton County Jail to be shuttered and replaced. They put that man in that cell, left him there to die, Harper said in a Thursday news conference, and that's exactly what happened. The family is working with doctors to investigate Thompson's death, Harper added. Brad McRae, Thompson's brother, told the Washington Post his family is shaken by the conditions detailed in the report and the photos that show the extent of the infestation across Thompson's body. The family decided to release the photos to illustrate the abuse he suffered, Harper's release said. It's heartbreaking, McRae said. The pictures really are awful. They're hard to look at. I'm going to warn everybody now, I haven't seen the rest of this article yet, but I might scroll down and the pictures might pop up. So I'm just warning you in advance. It's heartbreaking, McRae said. The pictures are really awful. They're hard to look at. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office, which operates the jail, did not immediately respond to a request for comment Thursday night. In a statement to WSB-TV, a spokesperson said the office was investigating Thompson's death and had approved funds to address infestations and disease at the jail. The statement also echoed Harper's call to replace the jail. Um, I love how it's like, oh, it's okay, we're going to investigate ourselves. No, in, in, those investigations should never be taken seriously. Of course these people are not going to throw themselves under the bus. There would be legal liability and all sorts of issues with that. They're going to clear their name. That's, of course. It's the biggest conflict of interest imaginable. I'm just going to investigate myself. Like, what? It's no secret that the dilapidated and rapidly eroding conditions of the current facility make it incredibly difficult to meet the goal of providing a clean, well-maintained, and healthy environment for all inmates and staff, the statement said. Harper told The Post the family appreciated that officials are working to improve some conditions but called for further action. If you look at those pictures, how deplorable that jail cell was, how did they get to the, that point in the first place, he said. It's not fit for an animal. So this is the guy right here. This is the guy right here. Thompson was a playful man who grew up wanting to be a doctor. All right, so they just they go on and explain more. Um, I want to show you the picture that we do have. So they didn't show the ones of him. They didn't show the ones of him, right, after being eaten alive by bugs. But apparently this is the jail cell. LaShawn Thompson's cell at the Fulton County Jail in Georgia. The cell was covered in, in filth and lice when Thompson was found dead in September. Wow. I mean, look. This story is important because we tend to, people tend to not think about prisoners, people who are in a prison, people who are in a jail, you know, criminals. But even if it's like pre-trial deten detention and they're not a criminal, right? There's, it hasn't been proven in a court of law. There hasn't been any due process yet. People just don't think about stuff like that because it's kind of, hey, out of sight, out of mind, right? Like of all the things we have to worry about, am I really going to put at the top of my list where we put people who we deem as quote unquote bad, who committed crimes or potentially committed crimes. It's just not something that really crosses people's minds. But at the very least, I think everybody expects a bare minimum, um, you know, amount of efficiency or a bare minimum amount of humanity, right? In situations like this. And what you learn from an article like this, and by the way, it's not just this article. We've covered other articles about private prisons and how they would serve moldy food and people would get sick. And they literally have a, an incentive to try to lock up as many people as possible because they make more money by doing that. Um, but, like, this is just an example of 
how it actually works in the U.S. And this is the main reason why there are many other countries who refuse to extradite people who are criminals to the U.S. Why? Because they say these prisons are, are egregiously terrible um, and it violates people's human rights to lock them up in there. That's how bad these prisons are. That's how brutal the system is. That's how, honestly, stupid and primitive it is, right? And um, regardless of where you fall on the question of like, should we do rehabilitation? Should we do punishment? Should we do a mix of the two? How long should the sentences be? Um, should we have the death penalty? Regardless of where you fall on any of those questions, I don't think any reasonable person could look at this and say, yeah, this is acceptable. When I look at this, I think, oh, this jail, like the people who are running this jail, they are criminals in their own respect. Because you can't take a human being, regardless of if they're a criminal, if they're not, if they went through trial already, if they didn't, you can't take a human being and put them in a situation like this where you basically slowly over an extended period of time kill them and torture them. This, this, No doubt this guy was experiencing torture before he died, right? You, can't, you just can't do that. You can't do that. And when you see a story like this, you say, oh, I get it. If I, if I was the head of a different country, I absolutely wouldn't extradite people to the U.S. if they were a criminal. You know, maybe you try to try them in your country or whatever, right? But there's no way you'd extradite them because then you'd have this blood on your hands if a situation like this unfolds. And, um, I mean, I just think it's, uh, it's an unpopular thing to say, but it's also something that is definitely true. We absolutely need to, like, update our jail system, our prison system. There needs to be a bare minimum amount of uh, cleanliness and and humanity that's a part of this. And um, we're notorious for having incredibly brutal jails and prisons, and we treat people terribly, right? Now, I'm not saying every prison or jail is like this across the country, but the fact that any of them are is disturbing. It's disturbing. Because this guy, keep it real, was effectively murdered by the system. He was murdered by the system. So... Again, it's not a popular thing to talk about, right? Like, oh, really? You're going to advocate for these people? Why? It's like, it's really more of a matter of principle. Whether somebody did a crime or didn't do a crime, that's irrelevant. You have to have a system that is reasonable. You have to have a system that is efficient. You have to have a system that is clean. And clearly, this just goes to illustrate that we don't care about, about people in this situation. We don't care. People just don't care. It's out of sight. It's out of mind. But um, it's truly unacceptable. It truly is unacceptable. So it's grotesque. There's really nothing else to say about it, but this is a very, very disturbing video, or not video, article. And um, just imagine if that was somebody you know, right? Or it was you, if you're wrongly accused or, or you did something and you were punished like this. Under no circumstances is this okay to treat other people like this. It's just not. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.